So in this video we're going to look at how to solve quadratic equations. Now the first thing you need to make sure of is that the quadratic equation is in this form, right? What I mean by that is that you have a zero here, not any number or x value, just a zero, and then you have three terms here. The first one is going to be an x squared, the second term is going to be an x, and the third one will be a constant, a number. Now the easiest way to solve this is to solve it by factoring. So what we do is we, we factorize this part of the equation, first of all. So to start it off, we write in two sets of parentheses. Now in these parentheses, you should have a value here and a value here, a value here and a value here. So to get the values that go in here, you ask yourself, what do you need to multiply to get x squared. So for this, for this you need to multiply x times x. Now you could say, well, isn't 1 times x squared also equal to x squared? That's true, but an important uh, thing to remember about this is you always have to have an x value here and an x value here. So the only answer there can be x times x. Now to get the terms that go in here, we have to ask ourselves two questions. First of all, what multiplies, what terms multiply to give you 12? That's why I write the M up here. So what terms multiply to give you 12 plus 12? And what terms add to give you minus 8? So I've written over here all the possible possibilities for multiplying to give you 12. Right, so you could multiply minus 1 by minus 12, 1 by 12. 3 by 4, or minus 3 by minus 4, because a minus by minus also gives you a plus. So we also have the possibility of 2 times 6, and minus 2 times minus 6. Now, we also know that we have to add the two numbers to get minus 8. right? So that seems to, to tell me that it's one of these two. Now if you add 2 to 6, you get plus 8, so we want a minus. So obviously it's going to be minus 2, minus 6. So this is, these will be the two numbers that we place in here. Now I've written all of these out just to show you how I think about this. But to be honest, once you've done this a good few times, you get fairly quick at it, and you don't really need to write all the numbers out. As long as you're familiar with the factors of 12, you know straight away, well, 2 and 6 add up to 8. So it must be either either of these two, and then you just think about the sign, well, if we add them we have to get minus 8, so it has to be a minus followed by a minus. So it's important to remember that you don't need to write all this out. It probably it, it would be a good idea when you're if, if you're not confident with, with these questions to do that at first, but after a while you get good at it and you don't need to do this. So you don't lose any marks if you don't put in this information. Okay, so the next thing that we do is we split this equation into two equations. We say, we take the first set of parentheses, it is x minus 2, we put that equal to 0. And then we take the second set of parentheses, and we say that x minus 6 equals 0. So we set what's inside the brackets equal to 0, each factor equal to 0. Now you're probably wondering why we set each parenthesis equal to zero. Now I'll explain to you why we can do this kind of splitting a part of the equation at the end of this video. But for now I'm just concerned with actually showing you the method of solving it. So we will go on and solve these two linear equations now. So to solve this equation we simply bring the two across the equal to sign and it becomes plus two. And likewise here we bring the minus six across it becomes plus six. So we end up with two answers, x equals 2 and x equals 6. And notice, in a quadratic equation where the highest power of x is 2, you always get two answers for x. So now to explain why we can do this splitting a part of the equation into two equations. Let's suppose this x minus 2 gives you some number. We will call that number a. And the x minus 6 gives you another number. We will call that number b. So you end up with a times b equals 0. 
So if a times b gives you zero, then we can say, for example, if a is a, a number, then what would you multiply a number by to get zero? It would have to be zero. Couldn't be any other number. Say let just imagine if a was say five. What would you multiply five by to get zero? It would have to be zero. Uh, likewise, if b was a number, then a would have to be zero. So for the same reason. Uh, and also there is the possibility that A and B are 0, that would also give you 0. So there's three possibilities, either A is 0, B is 0, or the two of them are 0. That's the reason why we can split the two of these apart. We can say that either this is equal to 0, or this is equal to 0. So really, I suppose what we should say in our answer is either X is equal to 2, or X is equal to 6. So I hope this explains uh, a fairly simple method of solving most quadratic equations. When I say most, it doesn't include equations where you have a coefficient next to x squared. For example, if you had the number 4 here, or any number next to x squared apart from 1, this method won't work. So you've got to use a different method for that, which I'll deal with in a later video.